Welcome back once again to the Imaginary Gallery. Tonight is more narcissist trash talk. The question we have for the evening is, does the narcissist or other cluster B creature really believe in karma? What's karma? Hmm? Karma chameleon? Karma is what? It's the belief that whatever you do in your life, whether it be nice or evil, will come back to you. So, if you wake up tomorrow morning and you see some poor old lady struggling across the street and she's dropping her purse and so on, you may rush up and help her help her cross the street and she thanks you well because of this if you believe in karma you believe that because you did that nice thing for her someday somebody will do something nice for you or if you hate your next door neighbor so when your next door neighbors left to go down the street you take a cage of rats that you bought at some store and turn them loose in a little hole in the basement of their house to show them how it is. Well, with that, probably, if you believe in karma, what will happen is something worse will happen to you. Well, the point of here is it doesn't really matter about the belief in or the belief not in because I think it's pretty well established that karma does exist, which what I, from what I've studied recently, it doesn't always necessarily mean that something you do now will be repaid to you in this lifetime, which evidently we have more than one lifetime, and we've had several, which is a whole different story. Most of the time, karma is something we witness within this lifetime. But the question is your cluster B. Does this person believe in such things? Well, I'd have to say from experience that the answer to this is no, they do not. And there are a few reasons for this. Keep in mind, they may tell you that they do, but a closer examination of them, their behaviors, and their history will indicate otherwise. First off, one has to be somewhat responsible or self-reflective in their behaviors. If they do something evil to someone, clearly, if they choose to do it, well, they're probably not concerned. Because look at the cluster B. It's a person who finds an innocent target who's done nothing to them and puts on a mask, is fictitious, is mirroring and doing all that crap that they all do, all under false pretenses, and with some kind of goal in mind to get something out of the target. Well, let's just think about that now. If you ever were involved with one, as I have been several, I've turned the tables around before, and I've actually caught on to what was going on and have done something in return with the foolish intention of teaching a lesson, which, by the way, doesn't work, but you can try. And you can tell and see how furious they become when you try to do this to them. Never mind that they've done it to you since day one, but the point of it is, if anyone is going to target another person like a predator, pretend to be like them in order to get closer to them, and so on, there is no way in hell that they're going to follow or believe any kind of concept like karma. Because 
the very nature of what they're doing to their targets is something they would never want done to themselves. And karma is that it, whatever you put out, you get back. Well, clearly, if they really believed in that concept, they'd probably make some different decisions before exploiting and doing horrible things to others intentionally and covertly. The, fu the funny thing I've recognized, because I've known so many such colorful monster characters, I have seen them in action. I have seen the things they've done. And even when I was through with them, I'd still observe. And I would see definite moments of karma. Meaning, they lie to the person they're dating right now and do some horrible thing, and then a few months later, the person they're dating runs off and gets married to somebody else or something. And I would see that and think, huh, karma and action. However, if you are the cluster B, psychopath, sociopath, narcissist, and that happens to you, it's a different story. Because, remember, they cannot self-reflect. They cannot see how their actions could ever contribute to someone else's behavior, even if that behavior is not beneficial to themselves, they will always blame whatever misfortune occurs on some other outside factor or person. They lack the ability to see that maybe the fact that they put on a mask the whole time with this relationship and it didn't work out and the person they tr they worked on actually found somebody real. None of that would ever occur to them. They would never think that their fake, fictitious mask had anything to do with it because to them, that's just perfectly normal. That's business as usual, using a fake mask. They don't see it like the rest of us do that aren't in that disorder. We can clearly, like if we're watching a movie, and we see the main character who does that, puts the mask on and seduces somebody and it's fake and it blows up in their face at the end. Well, most of us could watch that. And sometimes even the narcissist can. Well, <laughs> that person got what it deserved. It was fake in the whole time. But when it comes to themselves, they just cannot apply the same logic and it's kind of sick. So they don't really see how their past actions could possibly affect their current situation. And if their past actions were really bad and something really bad happens, well, it's not because of what they did. It's because of some other reason. Oh, well, the other person was crazy. Oh, the other person was evil. Oh, the, whatever they come up with. And that's how they do it. And it's the same type of mentality they use when they, for example, tell you that they're the most honest person in the world and then you catch them in ten lies. Well, it's the same principle they use for you that they use on themselves. Which is, for you, it'll be, oh, I am the most honest person. Those times I lied was only because of those reasons I told you excuses. And you don't listen to me. And then they go into a victim mode. And it's like, uh, I don't care about your excuses. That's ten lies. Coming from somebody who doesn't ever lie, uh, that's not going to do it. But good luck with that conversation. The other thing about these monsters is they, they need victims, one after another. And that contributes as well, because imagine if the normal, non-disordered person they're pursuing had six other lovers privately they were pursuing. How do you think this narcissist monster would react? Furious, even though it's got ten others, but they're out of order. Their brains are warped. They live in a fantasy world. The only thing they can do as far as connecting their behaviors to others is find out ways to manipulate others to get things from them, to feel that sense of source of supply of getting away with something. But as I've told a few of them, that's only temporary. Sure, you can find somebody who would never look at you again if they knew what you were and trick them and flatter them and whatever and then do whatever you do with them. But when they're gone, it's like, uh, all that that you had with them was phony. Which, for the trash talk portion of this, means these people 
can basically not be themselves and expect to have any kind of positive social interaction because what they are is so vile and disgusting. Oh my God. They have to disguise it with masks. You sensitive and you people. should be glad that you are not such so a person. So you still can't And it's over. funny if you look at them when you find out the truth, if you do, of their nasty history and trail of broken hearts behind them. And you say, wow, you were married almost by ten times? What happened? And guess what you'll hear? Oh, they all cheated. Oh, they all lied. Oh, whatever. And it's like, mm hmm And it's totally fictitious. I would resist the urge to say, really? Every single one? Which, more than likely, it's not true. And you'll be the next one, of course. But we know they cannot accept fault. And some of the theories I've uh, researched and read about is because there's a very thin line between what's underneath their mask and the outside of the mask and underneath it there's a buried deep idea that they're nothing that they're no good that they are worthless and they try to shove that back in the back of their mind while trying to charm you and telling you how wonderful they are and if you catch them in a horrible act and you try to address that act, which I've covered in many, 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 many videos, they do not want to hear even one ounce of anything that sounds like criticism. Because deep down, they know that they're nothing. They're worthless. And so if you simply say, hey, I didn't like the way this felt when this happened, uh, the, so what? Who cares? Well, you did this. Uh, and they don't even discuss it. Which, if you're with such a person who has been love bombing in the beginning and then later you catch them in all kinds of sickness and they completely act way different than they ever had before whenever a conflict came up chances are you're dealing with one of these monsters and you probably are if you're watching this channel <laughs> because you need somebody to tell you yes that is what they're doing yes they're abusive because it's very astounding to build with these people when they're new and they have the blank slate that you don't know what it's all about yet and they just seem to be perfectly in sync with everything about you any problem you have they solve and yet now the problem is with them and you say hey i'm really upset about this i can't believe oh would you drop it why do you keep bringing it? La, 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 la. and that kind of that's abuse because they should still be the same caring person they were before now sometimes they will pretend to be and they'll try to shape up temporarily because they still need something from you. But typically, after you've been with them for a while and you stop and think about things, it's like, wait a second. You had told me deliberately this thing for six months and you knew the whole time it wasn't, oh, would you stop it? Who cares? La, la, la. And they don't even give it a second thought, which is very abusive to you because you're still the same person you were before that was concerned with things that didn't work right, and yet now you feel totally abandoned and isolated with this monster. But keep in mind, no matter what they say, karma is not in their equation. Even though it's there, they just choose to pretend it doesn't exist. And I wouldn't tell them when you see it did, because <laughs> they'll tell you an excuse. Sure, I egged her house. And the fact that my window broke in my house, that has nothing to do with it. It was just old. <laughs> anyway, good luck. In my experimentation, I've learned if I tell someone I love them, it increases the chances by 100% that I'm going to get what I want from them. Look, I am the narco man. And I never loved you. Sorry, but I don't know what love is. But I just know that it works to get me what I want. So, whatever you think it means, well, that's up to you because, huh, I ain't got a clue. I hope you're happy with your new nobody. <laughs> I know once you started to figure me out, 
and you started discovering all my secrets and all my other men and women, I knew I was probably going to lose you. So I had to have the talk. It's the same talk I've had with every single one of the thousands of targets I've tried to take over. And that was, honey, no one else will take you the way you are. You need to just accept me and all my lies and contradictions. Why well, didn't say that hard? But you just need to accept that no one else will ever love you except for me. It never seems to work, but ha! Huh, it's never my fault, though. They've always got some kind of problem. Someday I'll find somebody it does work with, but everybody else is neurotic. Nobody else will accept the simple truth that I'm the best thing that ever happened to them. All 1,000 of them. They're lies. 